Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are talking about the next nutrients in the 17 essential nutrients out there, AKA plant mist, my knockoff of vlogmas. And we're talking about magnesium. So magnesium is commonly conjoined with calcium, but kind of the wrong way to look at this because magnesium is ultimately more important when it comes to the relationship it has with phosphorus and iron. Magnesium is used in nitrogen fixing, it's used in photosynthesis, and it's also used to help phosphorus and iron be transported around the plant. So magnesium is a mobile nutrient. And again, that means if there is going to be a deficiency, it's going to show up in those lower leaves and not the newer leaves. And this is because the mobile nutrient is redirected to the area that is needed for growth. So it's going to be redirected to the brand new babies that are being made that ultimately will ensure survival. And it's removed from the older leaves, which the plant has triggered as the older version or the older leaf. The way that this is taken up is just through the magnesium ion. There's no crazy uh, oxygens or hydrogens attached to it. And it's done through root interception. So this is again, the T-bone one, where the tip of the root hair or the main root, the very end of it has to physically touch that nutrient in order to be uptaken. This means that the nutrient has to be within the uh, soil profile and within reach of the root. And if it's not, the plant will be forced to dig down or sideways to capture more. So magnesium naturally is found in two places. The first one being seawater and the second one being the earth's crust. So this is very similar to phosphorus when we spoke about it. And it comes from the actual minerals of the earth. So that means it either has to be fluffed or flushed off of a mountain deposited by a glacier that was scraping the earth's crust or it needs to be re-added into the soil and by re-adding it can happen in a natural way such as animals eating and then depositing the waste on the earth's surface or through us adding it via a fertilizer or technically microbes lower in the system decomposing and ultimately their waste will also release magnesium over time and that would be done obviously through plant bits like dead foliage and stuff so really low phs will restrict the magnesium that is available to the plant and so potting soil mixtures or anyone using like peat moss they're ultimately going to have the lowest rates of magnesium uptake so as the ph increases and gets into that you know 6.5 range six that's when magnesium is bioavailable cation exchange capacity is a, another really limiting factor for magnesium the higher the cation exchange capacity the less likely the magnesium is going to be available to the plant. And this is because clay, for example, which does have a high cation exchange capacity, is likely to hold on to magnesium very tightly. And if there isn't enough magnesium within the soil solution, meaning the water component of soil, not the physical particulate uh, bound version, it won't be a bioavailable to the plant regardless of the pH. So that is something to keep in mind. If you have a clay soil, your magnesium requirements may be higher than someone that's in a sandier soil. And that is only because it's held on very, very tightly. And there's no real way to release it because that's just the physics, the chemistry of a clay soil. And another reason that magnesium can actually be uh, restricted or limited in uptake is an excess of phosphorus. So I said this multiple times in the series, nutrients need to be in balance. Dumping on a ton of everything in an organic form or an inorganic form, regardless, an excess is never a good thing because it can restrict the uptake of other nutrients. And in this case, phosphorus will restrict magnesium. So magnesium is commonly referred to as the reason why you get blossom and rot. And while it is a cause of it, it's not something that is very low in quantity. 
in the soil. There's usually a lot of magnesium present in the soil, particularly in here in North America. So it has the same story as calcium does. In North America, we have a ton of magnesium present, and this is because we have the Rocky Mountains, where obviously a lot of magnesium has come from, but then also the glaciers. And this sounds funny, but the glaciers really haven't been gone that long off of the land when they initially scraped it uh, down to the bone. And so when it did the scraping action, it did kick up, you know, the earth's crust and 2% of the earth's crust by volume is magnesium. So we do have a lot of it present and that means very rarely would you need to add magnesium to your soil system and it ultimately comes down to pH and the type of soil you have. So I encourage you if you believe you have a magnesium issue rather than um, necessarily putting like uh, magnesium citrate or um, Epsom salt is really common way to add magnesium. Um, rather than adding it via that, work on the pH of the soil. And I've discussed how to do this both in the potting soil, container gardeners, houseplant people side of things. And then the outdoor soil is a bit more complicated. I'm hesitating on doing a video on that only because uh, it's very difficult like you're you are kind of a slave to your parent material and your parent material from a soil perspective is where that soil came from what what's the parent that gave birth to that soil is it an ancient lake bottom is it a sand dune area is it glacial till that sort of thing it's all going to affect your ph and uh, unfortunately we are kind of sacrificial lambs to where we are in the world and what we can deal with. So the exception to that would be if you brought in new material from somewhere else, but ultimately that's what it comes down to. Now, if you're unsure how to test your pH or you don't wanna buy anything super fancy for that, my books, um, both the houseplant planner and the garden planner, both have a pH testing section in it to help you test your pH without the fancy Devices. What we use in the um, the planners is actually the cabbage method, and I got to do a video on how to do that just to help you guys along with this. But uh, I do have like a whole worksheet section here for soil pH, so you guys can go through that. And uh, like I said, these are both hard copy, like paperback copies, and then there's printable copies as well where you can print them out. And the links for that are in the description or the comments if I remember to put the links there. Uh, that's all I have for you guys today on magnesium. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you think magnesium is restricted in your soil or if you just ultimately think I'm wrong entirely. I'll post a study that was done by the University of Saskatchewan, which is the college or the university I graduated from. It's done by the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, which from what I understand is like one of the best agriculture universities in the world. I think it's like in the top five or something like that. So they ultimately probably know what they're talking about. Not just me saying this, it is something that we know as soil people that magnesium is very uh, highly available within our earth. It's, a, it's there in abundance, it's just maybe not available to the plant itself. I wanna thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys next time, bye.